Hello everyone, this is Tian Liang uh, from Pongchunnet. Today I'm going to introduce our work on the prefix granularity problem in ending adaptive forwarding. So the current IP architecture, the forwarding plane is stateless and has no adaptability. Uh, there are several cases the forwarding plane does not help much, like if there's a link failure, there's a congestion and prefix hijack. It heavily relies on the routing board code or the end host to um, handle these cases. But the end end forwarding is, can do much better in these cases because it's stateful and has adaptability. To summarize, in end end, the adaptive forwarding means it is able to observe past data retrieval measurements on multiple parties and then use it to improve the forwarding decisions for future interests. This idea was originally proposed by Chen in his ICM paper, and then it was implemented in uh, NFT as the ASF strategy and be deployed at the Indian testbed. The reason that ending had forwarding plane is adaptive because Indian uses this interest data exchange model and you maintain the states. So more specifically, here is the uh, forwarding processing details. You can see when the, in the interest path, interest is maintained at the P table in the middle. And after the data comes back, it also looks up the PIT table. So with the states of the PIT, you are able, the forwarding plane is able to measure the round trip time for it and interest data exchange, and also have other measurements. Then what is the prefix granularity problem? So Indian adaptive forwarding assumes that what we call interest routing locality, like the likelihood two interests are forwarded on the same path. So it assumes the routing locality is related to the length of the common name prefix. That means if interests sharing longer name prefix, they are more likely to take the same forwarding path. Then the problem here is, after you have the interest data name measurements, right? What name prefix length should be used to record the path per performance measurements? With the assumption, you can see, if we record the path measurement, performance measurement at a longer name prefix, we can achieve a better routing locality, which means they're more likely to, we, we make, it's more likely we make the right forwarding decision. But that also means the name will cover fewer interests, like longer name cover fewer interests. So that ends up with a bigger FIP table. And we define this problem as which name prefix sense to use to record the path performance uh, as the prefix granularity problem. Existing designs, they use a static name prefix to record measurements. For example, there is an interest data exchange like such a edu, such ua, ses, people 10, indexed HTML. And after we have the measurements on this one interest data name uh, exchange, we keep the measurement at the prefix, typically the FIB name, um, name prefix here. So here's the FIB name prefix, and it has a ranked list of interfaces. And the measurement is, on each interface is measured associated with it. So like here, you have measured RTT on the interface two to the slash edu slash UA. So this design has a limitation. It's known to have limitation in handle uh, partial network failures. And we give a concrete example here. We have a topology with two consumers connecting two routers and three producers. And R1 initially has the FIB slash A R2 P3, like the R2 is, has a higher ranking than P3 because R2 has a shorter delay to reach P1 and P2. So this is the initial setup and C1 is fetching data under slash A slash B, which ends up like the blue flow while C2 is fetching data, sash A, sash C, 
that ends up with the green flow. So there are two flows here. At some point, there's a link failure between R2 and P2. Ideally, we expect the forwarding plane is able to, at R1, is able to forward the green flow to P3, right? So there is another green flow under, like in the, on, in the bottom of the picture. Um, however, because we make the measurements at sash A, if we do that, we need to change the FIB sash A into P3 R2 instead of the current one. That will end up forward both the blue and green flow towards P3. So that will result like the blue flow will suffer from a longer delay path. So that means no matter you change, if you don't change it, the green flow cannot retrieve data. If you change it, the blue flow suffers from longer delay path. And we actually simulate this scenario in Indian same with ASF strategy, exactly scenario. And we find at the, uh, at, after link failure, the C2 is unable to retrieve it. That means the adaptive form didn't change the FIB ranking. This is because the blue flow keeps the routing, uh, keeps the adaptive forwarding belief R2 is still able to retrieve data with a shorter delay. So it didn't change the uh, route ranking. So how do we solve this problem? The key idea of this paper, you can um, remember is we do dynamic FIB expanding. That means we expand the current FIB name uh, from sash A to sash A slash C with a neural ranking here. And by doing this, R1 is able to uh, change the green flow to a different path while the blue flow is not changed. We also simulate this scenario in Indian same. We modified ASF strategy. We hard code this name prefix. We assume the strategy is able to find this name prefix with this ranking. Um, then we find after link failure, C2 will be forwarded to a turning path, and after some time, it's able to uh, reach the bottleneck of the bandwidth. So that proves if we, it is able to find it, we can solve this problem. But how can we find it, right? How do we do the dynamic expanding? Here are more details. So first question, when do we trigger FIB expanding? Um, the answer is when we observe a new ranking of next hops, we will trigger FIB expanding. And then how do you do FIB expanding? Uh, we tried three different algorithms. Uh, we will talk the, into details later. And for the three algorithms, we played with it, we tried it in different uh, traffic, we find they did not perform as stable by three thoughts. They are affected by where the accurate name prefix is. They are affected by the order of the traffic. So um, that drives us to think, how do we actually evaluate if a uh, acquisition is good or not? Um, then we have two metrics to, to measure them, to evaluate them. Um, last, we find the FIBIC expanding algorithm may end up with unoptimized results. And also we don't want the tree to be expanded forever. Um, so we come up with uh, the dynamic FIB collapsing mechanisms. So next I'm starting with the FIB expanding algorithms. The first one, what we call the top-down FIB expanding, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's how we do it in a top-down manner. So here is an example. Initially we have a FIB name tree, slash EDU, slash UA, with the route ranking phase zero, phase one. And then there's a link failure somewhere for this name prefix. We don't know yet, but we can observe the pack, packet performance, right? Like for the first interest data exchange, we observe a different paths, such a different path ranking. Like phase one, it performs better than phase zero. And then the expanding algorithm is triggered the top-down design is simple. We just uh, expand it one layer down. So we add one 
then component layer like such this with the new ranking phase one, phase zero. So the problem here is if it's accurate, then we find the expanded tree, right? But it's possible the problem does not actually at the slash a slash cs. It may happen at a longer name, like let's say what, what happens if the slash cs slash people should be the right accurate name prefix. That may end up, so if we have slash edu slash uhss slash news, that's actually uh, should not be affected, but because you add a name there, this one will be made a different one than the FIP longest prefix match one, right? So it will end up with adding a new node there, session news, phase zero, phase one. That's the, exactly the same as the original FIP one. And it's affected because we add a, add a new node here that may work for a partial subname prefix, not the whole one. So those that are not covered should not be covered by this name prefix. We'll add a new nodes there. And for example, if we have another web page that will end up node here. So you can see the top-down design may suffer. If it's not accurate when the first one added, it suffers from adding more and more nodes. The second design, the idea is bottom up. It's in contrast to the uh, top-down design. So the same example here, if we have mirrored a different ranking with the whole data name, which name prefix should we expand there? This one will take a conservative one by doing adding the full name minus one name component there. So it ends up adding a long name there, such CS people such 10 there. So this name component, if it's accurate, then we're done, here, right? But if the accurate name happens at a shorter name, so this one covers a small name space there that should be one. Um, that will end up adding more nodes here because the problem happens at such CS such people level, not a longer net level. So each level will be added to cover the such people level. So based on what we have observed that motivates us to come up with a better design, what we expect here is we really want to find the algorithm that can find the accurate name prefix um, without trying so many times. So this is what we call, we, we observe if we find the shortest name prefix with a solo route ranking, that's the accurate name we should find here. And to achieve that, we actually, in this algorithm, we need to maintain more observation uh, information here. For example, if we have mirrored slash edu, slash ua, slash cs, news, index, it's the same as the original one. We actually have to keep this record somewhere, maybe in a measurement tree. And so when, the next data comes back, comes in, and we have a different uh, ranking. And we can find that under slash edu slash ua, it has two different ranking, right? Also under CS, it has two different ranking. Only when it ha happens at the people level, it has the solo rankings, phase one, phase zero. So we just simply add this node there, and this is the accurate one we find. So this is, the ideal case of this algorithm. Later we'll find this algorithm does not perform well if the packets arrive in different order. And this algorithm also has uh, downsides of maintaining all those uh, measurement information. So then the next, I want to introduce the evaluation model. How do we evaluate it? So the model is we give a FIB name tree and a suppose accurate FIB expand name prefix there. And also we give a sequence of observed data names with route ranking. And we fit it in as the input. We, and we, in the container we have the uh, algorithms. They will take this as input and perform the algorithm. And the output is the expanded FIB tree. So for the expanded FIB tree, we want to see how many new FIB names are inserted. Um, if there are more names, that means the 
the the feedback algorithm, the expanding algorithm perform worse because each new name added means um, your previous added ones did not cover this case. You need more changes. And that, that also means a portion of traffic has suffered from non-optimal parties. So you, you need to add a new name. And the second metric we think that might uh, matter is the length of the newly added FIB names. Um, because the longer the name, that may uh, has impact on your lookup performance. So we think this is one metric that uh, matters. In more detail, we use a five lane, three out degree name tree there. And we will generate one accurate name prefix at different level. That means under this name prefix, the traffic should perform differently, should have a different route ranking. Then with this setup, we will randomly generate a sequence of uh, data names and uh, the observed route ranking. Like in different order, we have many sets. Uh, in, the, in the simulation, we have 15 different ranking uh, order of traffic and measure their um, the, the, the results of the expanding acquisitions. The first metric is the number of newly inserted FIB entries. As you can see, the bottom up has performed the worst. It has most number of uh, FIB entries in level one and level two. This is because it's, if the, if the node then needs to be changed at level one, because there are more nodes at a higher level, like it has a deeper nodes, so those nodes will need to be added to cover this level one namespace. So that will end up with a lot of nodes there. And you can see if at the level four, that's the accurate one. So it uh, performs as the optimal. The optimal means the, uh, you just add one name there. And the top-down design is similar, like if the problem happens, uh, at L1, you need that because it always starts from one level down. It didn't change the current level. So when, when the problem happens at a longer, like a higher level, so it will end up with adding more nodes because you are from top and down, right? And for the SS strategy, the acquis it has different performance. Uh, the, bird, the best case, that depends on the arriving order. If the best case, it will kind of achieve the optimal one, like the example we gave. Um, it is able to measure the different ranking and to find the, the one that um, has the best, uh, the, the, find the accurate name prefix. But if the packet arrives differently, your observation will change, right? That will may make you think um, differently. So. In the worst case, it actually performs, the blue line performs even worse than the top-down design. The second metric is the average height of the inserted FIB entries. And we also find the bottom-up design algorithm uh, performs the worst, while uh, for the SS strategy, the worst case is still worse than in L2, L3, L4, it is worse than the top-down design. Well, the best case is which can still achieve the optimal one. So actually after these measurements, we, uh, for this simple scenario, we think the top-down design uh, is the best one because of it's stable, it's easy to uh, implement. And also for the SS strategy, the, there's another overhead, which is to maintain the measurement tree uh, that we didn't show up here. And another contribution of this work is we optimize the ending adaptive forwarding process. The current forwarding, adaptive forwarding, it actually needs to update FIB on each data reception because you need to update the measurement and the measurement is associated with FIB. So this is the longest prefix match for each data arrival. So we want to reduce the number of FIB lookup, uh, reduce the number of FIB lookups. So by doing that, we maintain, we keep the measurements associated with the feed, PIT. And because more traffic, they use the best path and uh, their measurements, 
does not matter much because the measurement on one path does not make a change to the ranking of multiple parties. So when, only when you try multiple parties and uh, you may be able to make a different ranking of next hops, right? So, but in that case, within the lifetime of pit entry, if it's only one path, we can just get rid of it. If it's within the lifetime of pit entry, we have different ranking, we will update the FIP. So by doing this, we fill out most uh, packets. So the summary of this work, we define the perfect granularity problem, and the key is to balance the tree, uh, the trade-offs between interest rate in locality and FIP size. The key ideas of this paper, we have dynamic FIP expanding, which is to disaggregate FIP names, we also do dynamic FIP collapsing, uh, which is to aggregate the FIP names. We also optimize the measurement management and data processing to reduce FIP lookups. Um, thank you for listening.